Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Long Beach Joe, and we are back uh, here to talk Broncos versus Jets. So much going on with this football team right now. I mean, <laughs> there are reports swirling around all over the place about, you know, the possibility that Gaze would be fired if we did lose to the Broncos. He would absolutely be gone. Uh, there was reports swirling around that the franchise had lost faith in him, uh, that he'd lost the locker room, all those things. And now there are reports swirling around that, you know, all the other stuff may be true. He may have lost the locker room, all that stuff, but that the Jets may not be interested in firing him because <laughs> it could be counterproductive for Sam Darnold to have Adam Gaze fired. You know, this, this just reeks of the Johnsons not knowing what they're doing. Uh, yet again, mishandling the situation here with the Jets. It's just completely ridiculous. So I can't wait to get into it with you folks. Listen, I am the man of the people. I am here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Long Beach Joe, okay? Type that in, like that page, my content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me, I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on the Long Beach Joe Show. So without further ado, folks, let's go ahead and get into the show. I'm fired up. So listen, I've got callers on the line. We'll get to you in just a second. Also, my chat guys, uh, keep on chatting. We'll come to you as well. For those of you that listen to me on Blog Talk Radio, uh, I do stream live uh, during the radio show. So we definitely talk to people that are in the chat. Um, I'm also doing an initiative this year uh, with the Long Beach Joe Show. I'm partnering with the uh, Susan G. Komen Foundation to fight against breast cancer and to bring awareness, you know, to breast cancer. So, you know, if you'd like to donate, you can go to lacounty.info slash org slash go to slash Long Beach Joe. Um, also put that in the chat and various social medias as well. So you can go there uh, and donate anything, you know, that you can to my fundraising event. Uh, to be all over my social social media, to be all over my pages everywhere. Uh, so anyone that follows me, anyone that, that, that is a part of my social media, you will absolutely see it. Um, so, you know, anywhere that you folks want to go to be on, the, uh, be on the, uh, the Facebook page as well. So please go there and, and give anything you can, a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is. And as this month continues to go on, we'll continue to get involved even more uh, with the Suji G. Komen Foundation to fight against breast cancer because we got to do whatever we can to eradicate it. So with that said, listen, we're going to start off with Adam Gaze and this nonsense about him not being fired, even if we lose to the Broncos. What a depressing, <laughs> what a depressing report. You know, if the Johnsons truly think that it's a hindrance, or if anyone in that building think that it's a hindrance to Sam Darnold to fire Adam Gaze, I would say that it's a hindrance for you to have anything to do with the Jets or football. Because clearly you don't know what you're talking about. Do you understand that? You have a guy in Adam Gaze who has shown for years that he does not understand how to run a functioning offense at all. You look at the rankings. I brought those up in the past. I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep going over that stuff because clearly some people don't pay attention to numbers, but I will tell you that his offenses have always been bottom feeding and it hasn't even been close. He's always been a bad offensive coordinator. He hasn't produced on any level, on any level, that would show you that he, he, he should be able to be a head coach. He has not produced. His offenses have been horrific. Outside of one year with Peyton Manning, where Peyton literally called his own offense, Peyton, uh, Adam Gase has been trash. He has no business being a head coach here. But another thing that he's shown us is his inability to effectively understand the skill set of players and put them in the correct position to make plays. Anyone telling me that it is counterproductive to fire Adam Gaze because it might hurt Sam Darnold, let me tell you about a guy named Ryan Tannehill. You on this path? Tannehill under Gaze was terrible. He was so bad, they traded him for mid-round picks. The Dolphins were like, oh, this guy's not the guy. Tannehill goes to Tennessee with people that really understand how to coach. They understand offense. They understand 
how to utilize skill sets of players. And guess what? He's turning up big for them. He's their franchise guy now. I think he has the, the he has the fourth highest uh, quarterback accuracy rate in NFL history. Under under the Titans' tutelage, under the, that coaching tree, but under Gaze, he was horrific. And that's not the only player that's gotten away from Gaze and gotten better somewhere else. Devontae Parker, Grzeski, the, the, the tight end for the Dolphins, Kenyon Drake. You can keep on going and going with the list of guys that once they have gotten away from Adam Gaze have become better. What exactly are we doing here? Do we even care about Sam Darnold? Do we even care about this franchise? Do we care? I often wonder if the Johnsons even give a damn about football at all. You have a quarterback that you clearly see is regressing. You clearly see it. It's almost insulting that they're, they're putting out these, these little snippets in the media about how Adam Gaze needs to stay. It's almost insulting to fans that you're trying to tell us that we're so stupid that we can't see exactly what's in front of us. Under Jeremy Bates, Adam, uh, Sam Darnold looked different. He looked like a kid that had promise. We saw the arm talent. We saw the accuracy. We saw his improvisational skills. Once he got out of the pocket, we saw the ability, plays with his feet. We saw the ability to extend plays with his feet, keep his eyes downfield, and throw the football. We saw the ability for him when he would identify things that defenses would be trying to do, he would be able to audible, and he would change into the right play. We saw it. And then we saw how, com- how that all changed under Adam Gaze, how he was completely different. We see a regression in mechanics. We see a regression in ability to feel the rush. He just thinks everything's coming. He's so shell-shocked. He's so scared. We're, we see him not be able to audible at the line because Adam Gaze doesn't want him to do it. This is insane. It's insane. You have a coach out here that is literally – regressing a quarterback by telling him that he cannot audible out of plays in his third year in the league. That is critical to the success of a young QB, being able to identify things, being able to identify what the defense is just trying to do and beating them mentally. And Adam Gaze is taking that away. His play calling, his, his scheme does not help Sam Darnold. It does not put him in the best position to make plays. It doesn't put other guys in the best position to make plays either. Look what he's done to Le'Veon Bell. A guy that was a certified Hall of Famer before he got here. Had more yards from the lines than anyone else I believe in NFL history. He comes here, he has career lows. Careers in the tank here under Adam Gaze. So let me get this right. Adam Gaze somehow can convince us that maybe Darnold's not the guy, Le'Veon Bell's not very good, but all of these success stories from guys that have left him, guys that have went other places and been able to truly show their talent, been able to truly show what they can bring to the table, None of that matters because we need to keep Adam Gaze around because if we don't, it's going to be counterproductive to the growth of Sam Darnold. No, sir. I would argue keeping him is counterproductive to the growth of Sam Darnold. Getting rid of him would be a complete benefit to Sam Darnold. And the Johnsons, the Chris Johnson is one of the biggest idiots in that build. He is the biggest idiot in that building. The Johnsons are horrible owners that have no clue of what they're doing. No clue. From the handling of the firing of Mike McCagnin, allowing him a draft and a free agency, before you got rid of him for making bad decisions in the past, you continue to let him make decisions for the future. 
to the hiring of Adam Gaze, passing on guys like McCarthy, Munkin, Rule, all those guys, because you wanted Gaze. This this franchise is a is a goddamn joke. It's a joke, and it's being ran by people that are idiots and clearly just don't give a damn. I'm tired, man. I'm tired of this team. I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of these owners. I'm tired of this franchise making dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb ass decision, and thinking that it's going to work. I'm tired of it. So we're going to talk about that tonight. I had to get that off my chest. We're going to we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about Adam Gaze. We're also going to talk about this upcoming game against the Broncos. So I'm going to go to the callers first. My chat guys, please keep chatting. We will come to you. I will talk to everyone. Again, if anyone wants to call in, it's 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Please call in. Give me your thoughts and takes. Cuz I need I need to talk to some Jets fans tonight. I'm 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 tired. But I I'll go to the I'll go to the callers first. 904, I'm coming to you. Let me know what your thoughts are about this upcoming game. Let me know who you are and when you're from as well. What's going on, Jets fans? This is Chris from Florida. Make sure you hit a like and subscribe to my boy, Long Beach Joe. What's going on, Chris, man? How's everything going, man? You come in fired up every time. I love it. Absolutely, bro, because I got to show the love and support not only to the hardcore fandom for Jets, but also guys who represent the Jets like yourself, man. Thank you for keeping on the yeah. strong struggle for the love. <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm trying my best, man. This team is just yeah, trying to man. rip me apart, though. I'm trying my best. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I'm listening to you while I'm waiting on the call line, and I'm applauding to every single word you're saying, dude. It is ridiculous. You you hit it the nail on the head, my man, when you said that uh, the, comparing the first year of Sam Donald's rookie introduction to the NFL – to even his second year and this year now, it's just so painful. I don't know if you saw that post uh, conference that Sam did uh, after the loss to the Colts, but I was crying. Oh, he looked so that. beat up. Yeah. It was so. I wanted to give. I was like, I was like, dang. I wish I. I can only feel what the father must feel like seeing his son on that. Because you always hear Sam Donald trying to be positive, trying to keep him himself up his head was down he was so yeah. down i felt so bad i was like man stop this and then you bring up the news about adam gates oh gosh you're absolutely right i've never wanted to sell this team so badly man and this <laughs> is a complete idiot you know i'm oh gosh i just i don't know man i just feel like people are yeah. trying to People are testing me, man. I'm working right now, and people are just testing me right now. Thank God that this game is on Thursday because that means I can enjoy my weekend and not have to see a loss on yeah. my three days off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so, and again, I want to thank you for calling in, Chris. Listen, I, I want to get to the game with you because we, we can go on about gays and, and oh, his no. effect on the team all night long. But how concerned are you about the team coming out flat against the Broncos? Because we've seen that in the past. In home games where the team comes out and just doesn't look good under gaze, are you concerned about that? My concern more is to see this game, and I want to see what are the players saying about this franchise and about the organization and coaching. Based on what the score is going to be at this game, I'm going to look at it as, okay, this team has truly given up, this this team doesn't care, or this team is just trying to show that they have talent, but there's no true guidance or leadership behind it. That's what I'm looking for when I look at the scoreboard and how hard these players are going to play during this game, especially who we're going up against, such a beat-up Broncos team. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that I look at as well. This is a Broncos team, like you said, that is beat up. They've got quite a bit of injuries. I mean, they they have, you know, some guys offensively, you know, Gordon, uh, you know, they got some guys that can move around out there, but like you said, they're beat up. This is a team that we've, if you really want to win, if this team is really, you know, if this team even gives a damn, you got to come out and fight. You got to come out out the gate and ready to go. Like you got to put it on them early. 
and take the game away early because we are desperate for a victory. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we are desperate for a victory. This is the bottom of the box. We are desperate here. You got to do whatever you can to take the game away there. But I, I want to keep going on with the offense with you as well, Chris. And you look at this yeah. wide receiver core, it's pretty beat up. It's looking like Crowder will possibly be back, though. What are your expectations out of him in this game? Um, my expectation is Crowder to lead the offense, to lead the receiving core charge. I believe that if Crowder can make a couple of completions, he'll bring some – if anything, he'll bring confidence back into our quarterback. That's the biggest thing mm-hmm. for me. I want Sam Darnold – we've been watching uh, Chris, uh, Chris Herndon, Ryan Griffin – um, and even, what's his name, uh, oh gosh, uh, Hogan and Barrios, dropping yeah. dropping the touches that Sam Darnold could have made into a, a, a next rounding, uh, next set of downs. And unfortunately, due to those downs, due to those drops, you diminish your quarterback's faith in himself, thinking, hey, maybe I'm not as good as he said on the, on the post. So hopefully Crowder mm-hmm. can reassure uh, Sam with a bunch of completed catches, and if anything, he'll uh, bring in some he'll bring in some questionable plays. Uh, so that way, the the running de- oh my gosh, I'm so scared about the running plays too. Like I don't, I just want to see Crowder catch a couple balls. I, I I really don't want to see go down that down that line. Please. Oh Let's man. Yeah. I mean, so uh, my next question, my my next question for you, Chris, is when you look at this offensive line, we're getting Fant back. It looks like he's going to be playing, uh, but Beckton's dealing with a little bit of a shoulder injury. He's still questionable for the game. How concerned are you about Bradley Chubb? Because this is a guy for the Broncos that can he can rush the passer now. This is a guy that can move. So, are you concerned about him wreaking havoc on us? I'm I'm not as, uh, so watching. Uh, I can't rem- I can't really remember the the uh, left sided. Uh, tackle's name uh, from last year, uh, from the last game. But I do know this. Uh, I'm not as concerned about him, uh, you know, much as more sacking, but I'm more concerned about our tackle causing more penalties. He obviously was a penalty uh, starter. Uh, Hopefully he can keep that same groove of protecting Sam. And, of course, I have a lot of faith in Sam's uh, uh, notability of the pocket realizing when he's going to get sacked, he needs to escape the pocket. Um, but, hey, I, I do understand your concern. But I guess I'm more happy that Beckton is not going to play because, obviously, he's the star of this offense right now, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you want to protect your, your player, your your player, especially your rookie, as much as possible. I'm sure he's picked, though, because he's like, he yeah. probably wants to play in like, open pockets, especially now that P. Ryan, uh, P. Ryan is, uh, is playing again and so forth. Yeah. And so I want to go, go over to the defense with you real quick, dude. You're absolutely bringing the fire. When you look at the Broncos right now, they're starting Brett Rippon. I mean, this is a guy that's coming out the gate. I'm wondering, hey, shouldn't the defense come out and just immediately bring pressure to this guy, try to overwhelm him? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think we should bring blitzes all day to just get in this guy's face and bang him around? Absolutely. 100% agree. After seeing his last game, uh, seeing him – uh, only only nine throws and eight were eight completions and one interception. How do you not try and take advantage of that? My biggest thing here for sure is uh, Greg Williams has to show again how what kind of coach he is. That last game against the um, against the Colts, not even one interception against Philip Rivers, a guy who was becoming a turnover machine, and all of a sudden the the offense couldn't even we didn't even sack the guy. So I hope Greg Williams really wakes up people. I'm really hoping Quinton Williams is going to show, hey, last game was a major fluke. I got to make double as many sacks as I did um, when I when I played against the uh, 49ers. Like I need Quinton, I need Quinton Williams to really step it up here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you, and that 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 that's definitely a guy. Like you said, uh, Quinton Williams is a guy that I'm really looking to see attack. Uh, really have a you know a very solid game this game. I need to see him make an impact as well. So my final question to you, Chris, is what is your final score prediction for the game? Oh, oh gosh, this is, this is hard to say because, of course, we already know the news that Gates will not be, you know, dealing with his job concerning. Uh, I'm going to say this is a close game just because of the team we're playing against and I don't think that we're really trying. Uh, I'm going to say the, the, the final score is going to be 10 to 10 to 14 uh, Broncos win. 
ten to fourteen Broncos win. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. I think it's going to come down yeah. to the second half, and the the Jets are just going to again die like they don't exist, and they're playing a completely different game. And this is just hoping that they're trying to make a, a point and trying to tell people, hey, get this guy out of here. We want a real leader, like Eric the Enemy. Hey, go Jets! Hey, all right, you have a good one, Chris. I want to thank you for calling in, man. Again, you have a good night. Listen, <laughs> Chris is just. Man, he called in. He took the Broncos to win. I, you know, I completely understand it. I am hoping for a Jets win. <laughs> just, dude, I just don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I could take it. If, if the Jets lose this game, especially if we come out and look horrific, like we've looked in past games against the Broncos, you know, <laughs> and then Gay stays around after that. If they don't fire, dude, I'll just, I'll absolutely lose my mind. But. I'm going to keep going with the callers in a second, uh, 908. When I come back, uh, you know, I'll definitely be talking to you. But uh, I got to go to the chat really quickly. You know, again, if you're listening to me on Blog Talk Radio, I also live stream as well during uh, the show. So my chat guys, they love, you know, going after it. They get after it. And let me tell you, they'll know. They'll let you know what time it is, okay? <laughs> they will let you know what time it is in that chat. So we're going to go to them real quickly. Randy Yaw says, uh, if Gaze is here next year, I'm not watching. Screw all of that. It's not worth it. <laughs> you know, look, there's a lot of people that have said the exact same thing. Um, I, hell, I've heard, you know, media guys that are big Jets fans say, listen, if they keep this guy around, you know, especially if he's here next year, I'm done with the franchise. I heard him say that. And I understand it. I understand the frustration because what you're doing is <clears throat> you're basically giving no hope to the fan base. You know, that's exactly what you're doing. And I always preach this. The Rams turned, turned you know, their franchise around by hiring the right head coach. <clears throat> they looked at the situation and they said, hey, Jeff Fisher, not the guy. We need to get rid of him. We need to bring in a guy, uh, you know, like Sean McVay that's going to get the job done. And they brought Sean McVay in and they were able to turn around the, the, the careers of so many guys there offensively. I mean, it was ridiculous. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so looking at what the Rams did, I don't understand why we're looking at the situation thinking, hey, you know, we can keep bad coaches around and be successful. It's completely ridiculous. That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, going back to the chat again, point five, yo, salute to you, point five. Uh, welcome to the chat. He says they worried about their pride being hurt, knowing they hired this bum coach. That's what a lot of people are saying as well, uh, uh, point is that Chris Johnson is just not willing to admit that he's made a big mistake. He's made a huge mistake in hiring Adam Case. So I'm going to go back to the callers really quickly. Chat guys, please keep chatting. We'll definitely come back to you. 908-908, I'm coming to you. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and what are your thoughts about this Jets game upcoming with the Broncos? What's up, Joe? It's your boy, Steve. Steve, how's it going, my man? How are you doing today? I'm doing I'm doing all right, Joe. I mean, obviously we got a Jets game tonight. You know, the thing is, um, I, I can't I couldn't wait to get into you uh, with this tonight. So let's get into this, man. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's go, man. What are your so, thoughts, man? What are your thoughts so about the, thing. The, the game? Yeah. Well, before we talk about the game, I just want to go um, to Adam Gaze first before we talk about the game. Listen, Joe. I absolutely agree with you 100%. I absolutely cannot stand this coach anymore. Like, like it's just – and I do agree with you, and I am starting to lose all of my respect to Christopher Johnson and to the Johnson mm-hmm. family. It's just – the thing is, honestly, I really, really, really don't think that Christopher Johnson has no idea what, how in the hell to run a franchise. Honestly, I, 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 know, I know this recently happened with the New York Mets recently, but I really, really hope that one day there is a billionaire out there that will go out and buy the New York Jets from the Johnsons. It's just the thing is, Joe, I just can't really take this anymore with Adam Gates. It's that, now, the only other thing is what I found really crazy on Twitter during the week. When it was first spoken about, how there was a possibility that Adam Gaze could be getting fired if the Jets do lose tonight against the Broncos at home. Listen, 
the thing is what drives me a little bit crazy about other New York Jet fans, which is this. Jet fans are literally saying throughout Twitter about, oh, we should lose this game. Let's all root for the Broncos tonight so we can get Adam Gaze out of here. Listen, I always like to see the Jets win a game. Listen, you just can't go against your team just because your coach doesn't want to get – just because your coach wants to get fired. But I got to be honest, listen, I don't like Adam Gaze either. And whether win or lose tonight, he should be fired by tomorrow. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen because the Johnsons have no idea what the hell to do. So, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everything you said was correct, Steve. I mean, I, you know, I look at it like this. I understand why some fans uh, do want us to lose. So I'm, I'm not going to knock them. I get it. You know, the logic there is, hey, if we, get, if we take this L, there's no way in hell that they can bring this guy back. Like, there's just no way. No, no, there is <laughs> there's no, no way you can defend it. Is- so I get it. But I, I, I'm always looking – uh, for Jets W. That's that's what I'm always looking for. I don't ever really want to see the team lose. That's not my thing, but I do understand fans that do. But for me, Steve, the biggest the biggest thing, <clears throat> the biggest hindrance I think with keeping Gaze here is the effect that he'll have on Sam Darnold's progression. And that's where I want to go with you is if you keep this guy around, I mean, is there any hope for Sam? Do you think that, you know, if we keep this guy for the rest of the season, that it's basically just putting Sam in a position where we can't undo the things that Gaze has done to him? No, I no, no I totally agree with that. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that it's that, listen, some people do say that it is the wrong decision to fire your coach in the middle of the season, even if you're doing bad. Listen, firing your coach in the middle of the season is not the worst thing to do. There have been teams that have done it in the past. Uh, it's just, listen, it's just now to this day, you know, like we back in, at the end of the 2018 season, you know, after we let Todd Bowles go, we missed out on so many opportunities to hire a really great coach. Like Mike McCarthy, you said, as an example, Joe, we used to talk about it, how back and forth, how you both, how you yeah. and I both wanted Mike McCarthy to be the Jets' yep. uh, new head coach. Um, Another yeah. guy who I also would want to, um, the guy, well, he's possibly going to be a head coaching candidate for next year. Uh, the guy, the offensive coordinator from Kansas City. Let me look at what Air he's done. Me. Like, if you watch, yeah, if you watch what he did on Monday night football to the Baltimore Ravens, and the Ravens usually have a good defense, look at what he did against that Ravens defense. Yeah, he. I mean, the, the the play calling, everything he was putting together. I know Andy Reid is like the main play caller, but he definitely is a huge part of the offensive game plan. He helps Andy Reid uh, with his play calling as well. But that, I mean, the way the Chiefs look is just, they look phenomenal. <laughs> and you're completely correct, Steve. I mean, no, 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 we, talked Chiefs, about, we talked about, we talked about that in nauseam. Yeah. We talked about McCarthy and all that stuff in nauseam. And it ended up with Gaze to me was completely ridiculous. And I'm just I'm so worried about Sam. It's just it's ridiculous at this point. I mean, no, and, to and me I to come out honest, and, and Joe, say the thing, say that the fact that you're not going to get rid of gays, even if you know it, that, that at least that's the talking point that the, clearly that the organization is putting out there that they're not going to fire gays if they don't. And that to me just signifies that you don't care about Sam Darnold, you don't care about his progression, and you don't care about the effects of bad coaching, or you don't care about the effects that bad coaching will have on a young QB. Yeah, but now here is the other thing now I'm going to say this. This is for all the Jet fans that are talking about, oh, we should let Sam go after the se- after this season so we can get Trevor Lawrence if we're going to have the number one pick. Listen, if you're going to real, if Jet fans are really, 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 really going to be thinking about that, it's absolutely crazy. Listen, Trevor Lawrence is definitely going to be a great quarterback in the NFL. But let me tell you something right now. I've seen what Sam can do in the past when, when he's had better coaching. Listen, if, if we get Sam a much better coach and a much better talented offense than what we have right now, Sam Darnold will show what he did in his rookie season. He will show yeah. what he did in USC. He will show what he even did in high school. Listen, you, you got you Jet fans have to understand this whole thing about tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Listen, if they would do something like that, 
it would be a huge, huge mistake. The main reason yeah. why, Jet fans, why Sam Darnold is not doing really well right now is because of Adam Gaines. Adam Gaines yeah. is a problem. Listen, listen, whether we win or lose tonight against Denver, no matter what happens, I, I mean, listen, I'm telling you all, I don't think this is going to happen tomorrow, but Adam Gaines needs to be fired. Listen, I can't yeah. stand watching that phony buffoon on the sideline anymore, mm-hmm. sitting his butt on the bench. When he sits on the bench, yeah. it drives me crazy. Yeah. Yeah, look, Steve, I, yeah, I'm telling you, you're bringing a fire right now, but I want to go to the game with you because we can talk about, you know, Adam Gaze and oh, yeah. Let's go to the, game. the nonsense with him all night. So I want to talk to you about this offensive line, though, because Beckton dealing with that shoulder injury, he's still questionable. If he doesn't play, how concerned are you about that left side? I mean, it's definitely going to be a bit of a concern. I mean, because, you know, listen, Denver's best defensive player on their team currently right now is Bradley Chubb, the fifth overall pick back from the 2018 draft. Here is the thing about Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb definitely always shows heart every game for that Broncos team. But now when you look at this Denver team going up against uh, a third-string quarterback tonight, I don't really know anything about this guy who we're facing tonight. I mean, it's just the thing is, like, Greg Williams has to bring a defensive has to, has to put pressure on this kid that we're facing tonight. Yeah. Because if we don't put any pressure on this kid tonight, this kid definitely could have a chance of throwing the ball down the field. Now, obviously, yeah. you know, obviously there's no Von Miller because he's out for the season. I mean, the biggest thing that Denver doesn't have this year is Cortland Sutton. I mean, listen, Cortland Sutton was supposed to be a, a number one future receiver for that team. But with the torn ACL he suffered in week number two against Pittsburgh, it definitely does hurt the offense. Here, here is the thing. And I got to be honest, Denver is not a very good team when they have to travel to the East Coast. I've seen games before the last couple of years when they had to go on the road to the East Coast. And they always mm-hmm. look very flat. And the advantage that Sam has to take care of tonight this is a very inexperienced team he is going up against. Like, there are inexperienced players that this team has. So, I mean, hopefully there will be something that happens tonight. Hopefully tonight we can yeah. get that first W. I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, because, listen, if we go 0-4 after this game tonight, oh, believe me, I want Adam Gaze out the door as soon as possible. <laughs> I look, I, I hear you, Steve. You know, I mean, they, they got some guys, you know, on their team that's young, but they've also got some guys that, you know, are showing, have shown and proved some veteran guys that can also lead as well. There's a, some veteran guys on that O-line. They got Melvin Gordon. You know, they got some guys that, that you know, have been in this league and been around. But, you know, I, I have a lot of the same concerns that you have as well. You talked about, you know, the Broncos coming out flat on the East Coast. You know, so do the Jets. <laughs> you know, the Jets are coming out flat as well at home. We came out flat against the Niners. You know, we we, we come out flat, too, so I'm worried about that as oh, well. No, we, but uh, I want to yeah, get your I've thoughts on this. Hold on yeah. hold on a second, Steve. I want to get okay, your thoughts ahead, on this no. really quickly because, you, you, yeah, you talked about you talked about their offense and some of the guys they have. One of the guys they have, Melvin Gordon, this guy that can run the football. We've had issues stopping the run recently. So I want to get your feelings on this. How concerned are you about the Broncos loading up like the Niners did, like other teams have done against us as well, and just running the football down our throats? Listen, I mean, no, no, don't get me wrong. Melvin Gordon has actually done some good things for the Broncos to start off this season. I mean, obviously, with Philip Lindsay being hurt right now, I mean, Philip Lindsay, I think, is supposed to come back tonight. I think he's questionable for the game tonight as well. The only thing is about facing, about facing, Denver starts to have a really good running game, which is something that, because the thing is, if we could stop Denver's run, then we will mm-hmm. definitely have, have a shot to, to win this game. Because if Denver can't run the ball against us, then that's going to put pressure on this young quarterback tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Steve. So with that said, man, give me your uh, final score prediction for the game. 
You know something? Listen, throughout, I don't, listen, throughout everything that's going on, you know, you don't usually don't expect what's going to happen. But, however, though, I think tonight this definitely will be a game that Sam does bounce back. I mean, Sam just has to take his time tonight and be like and, – and make these big plays down the field. Hopefully, I mean, because, listen, Adam Gaze did at least let him throw the ball down the field against the Colts. I will say that. But – if I had to make a final score prediction right now, I'm going to predict that tonight that the Jets will win. I'll give them a 24-10 win tonight at home. Okay, okay, okay. All By right, the way, Steve, with the Jets Joe, win? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, hang on, Joe. Before I go tonight, Jets fans, you who listen to this call on this show tonight, trust me. This is not on Sam Darnold. This is all on Adam Gates. And tonight, there's a possibility that you'll see it, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, I want to thank you for calling in, Steve, man. You have a good night. Good night, man. Oh, good night. Woo! Listen, Steve bringing the heat right now. Steve fired up. He talking about Adam Gates, how bad Gates is, you know, but he predicted a Jets victory. He predicted a Jets victory, so I'll give that to Steve. He talked. To, he he had a lot to talk about. He he actually got on a lot of fans as well, screaming for Trevor Lawrence. You know, and I and I understand his take there. I mean, I look at the situation pretty much the same way. If you think Trevor Lawrence would be able to succeed with what Sam Darnold has been given, you're smoking crack. Stop. <laughs> I'm telling you, you you're absolutely smoking crack. Okay, if you think that it would work, if you think that. Trevor Lawrence would just magically somehow be able to figure out how to get around bad coaching, no protection, you know, no offensive weapons. I mean, I I, I, I don't see that happening at all. Hell no, to the no, 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 hell to the no, hell to the no, to the no, no, no. Hell no, that's definitely just not going to happen, but – um, I'm going to come back to the callers in just a second. You know what I'm saying? We, we're getting a lot of heat from the calls. i got a lot of callers. I will get to you folks. You will get your time, so please be patient. I'll move to you as fast as possible. But I want to go to the chat because i got my chat, guys. Again, if you're watching me or listening to me, excuse me, on Blog Talk Radio, I do a live stream during the show. So i got my chat guys here. They're going off in the chat. So let's go ahead and get to it. Jet Black from the chat. Salute to you, Jet Black. Uh, he says, if the Jets lose and Gaze is still here, my Jets gear goes in the toilet. <laughs> I, I, you know, I know a lot of Jets fans that, that uh, you know, have said some of the same things and kind of feel the same way, and I, I understand it. Okay, I understand the anger. I understand why you feel how you feel. I get it, all right? I mean, <laughs> when you're watching this team go out there and play the way they play, and it, it's literally because the head coach doesn't understand how to do his job. The offense has been bad since we've been here and you're just doing nothing about it. That's just, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, next guy in the chat, Tyler Jolio salute to you, Tyler. Tyler says if the Jets lose and Gaze is still here. I'm not buying any more merchandise until he gets canned. <laughs> Understandable, understandable, Tyler, you know, a lot of other Jets fans feel the exact same way, you know, they're just not willing to salute, uh, to, to stick with the team, you know, through this nonsense, because it's so obvious what's going on here. It, it's, so bad, uh, you know, the situation that, that we're being put in, we're being hindered by a bad head coach. And it is obvious what the problem is here. It just seems like the Johnsons don't understand it or don't care to understand it. So Tyler also says players are going to split in the locker room. I see it happening. You know, listen, uh, you know, there's already, you know, reports out there that he's lost the locker room. We've already heard players come out and talk about, you know, how they don't want him here and how, hell, one of the reasons why Jamal Adams said he left was because, hey, I'm not a fan of Gaze. I don't think he's a good head coach. I don't think he's the guy that, you know, is the guy, the right guy for the job in the franchise. So we've seen that and we've already heard it. You know what I'm saying? So I, it wouldn't surprise me if there was other blowups in the locker room. You know, we'll see what happens going on down the stretch. But, man, let me tell you something. This situation and saddling, you know, this team with Gaze is completely ridiculous. Uh, Going back to the chat again, Randy Yaw says, like, it feels like we don't even have a, a legit head coach. Gaze comes off like some dude out there just cosplaying as a head coach. <laughs> Listen, Randy going off. Salute to you, Randy. I, you know, I've said it before. You know, Adam Gaze really has no business being a head coach. He has no business at all. 
Uh, his offenses are terrible. He's not an offensive guru. For Chris Johnson to come out and call him a brilliant offensive mind just shows me that Chris Johnson has no clue of what he's talking about. But we're going to get back to these calls. Chat, guys, please keep chatting. I see you, Nelson. Salute to you, my man. Welcome again to you to the stream. Uh, you know, we're going to get back to these calls, though, because there's a lot of calls here and people want to talk. So I'm coming to 619. 619, I'm coming to you. Let me know where you're from. Let me know your name. Let me know your thoughts on this Jets and Broncos game. What up, what up, Joe? This uh bro XRP. How you doing, bro? Bruh, how are you doing today? I'm I'm doing the best that I can. I'm trying to I'm trying my best to hold it together and get through it. But <laughs> you know, this this team, man, this I'm so frustrated, bro. And the reason why I'm so frustrated is because the answer, the correct answer is obvious, and we just keep like not doing what needs oh, to be man. done to put the franchise in the yes. right position. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's so yeah. frustrating. When it's so obvious, like when, <laughs> I mean, when it's so obvious what you need to do, but you just keep not doing, you know, the right thing. I mean, th- doesn't it frustrate you, bro, the fact that <laughs> they've, it's already kind of coming out, right? It's already kind of coming out. We're hearing it yeah. in d- certain media, you know, that it seems like the Jets are kind of leaking out that even if we lose tonight, Gaze is not going to be fired because it'd be, you know, a hindrance to Sam Darnold. Tell me how, what you think about that, man. Well, I'm telling you right now, I, I, I just I just got a hot take of breaking news. Adam Gase's wife is trying to fire him, but the Johnsons won't let that happen. <laughs> oh, my God. It's unreal. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Go Jets, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I'll put it to you like this. When you have Joe Flacco activated for tonight's game, you already know we're going to win the game because of old Joe Flacco. Oh, man. I'm t- man, oh, man. Oh, bro, I'm telling you, I ran, I, I ran my, my toe in between my door just, just <laughs> before coming in here to have this chat with you. So it's going to be one of those type of nights. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, me, I, the thing that, yeah, look, I hear you. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard other people say as well uh, that they think, you know, of course, Gaze is going to try to blame this on somebody like he always does. And he'll probably yep. find some way to start Flacco. He'll finally f- try to find some way to squeeze Flacco into the game and, you know, pull you know uh, Sam out. And I just, I, man, I could see it happening. But let me tell you something. If you do that and... I'll just I'll just lose it, dude. <laughs> I just I I'm can't stand, you, I just hey. don't understand why he has to be around, bro. I just I don't understand what exactly are you waiting for from Adam Gates? He's shown you everything. He's shown you everything that he has, and it's not enough. It's just completely ridiculous. I think he had a conversation with Peyton Manning and said, "Hey, you know, oh, man. I, you know, do you think I can still run this play with old Sam Darnold? Because obviously Peyton Manning is the one cutting the checks." Over at oh. uh, you know one Jets drive, you know because he pretty much hired him. Oh right? man! I mean, I'm just sick and tired of this show, man. Like, I really <laughs> honestly think the writing is on the wall. Somebody wants some riots to start over the Hudson <laughs> or something. I'm serious. I mean, this is just a shit show. I'm sorry, bro. But this oh, is just watch your watch your language. Watch your language, my man. Watch your language. All right. Watch your language. No cursing on my show. I understand people are upset, all right. but please don't curse on my show again, bro. Just watch your language, all right? You got one. But let's move on. Let's move on. It's, 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 move it's on. horrible what's Go going ahead. on. So we, yeah, we, I, we I, I understand. I understand. So let, let's move on. I want to talk to you just about this offense, because if you look at this situation offensively, uh, we're pretty banged up at wide receiver, man. Who do you think steps up and produces in this game, especially if Crowder, people are saying that he's coming back, but – Let's say, you know, game time decision, he does miss time. What do you think who do you who do you think is the guy that's gonna be able to step up and be a target for Sam? I think old reliable Hogan. I mean, cross some routes. I mean everybody's got the everybody's got the the the, the playbook for, for tonight. The whole entire NFL, all thirty one other teams know exactly what's going down from the first quarter through the to the through the end of the game. There's gonna be a lot of crossing mm-hmm. routes. We may run a jet sweep here and there. Uh, we may do a bootleg early on with 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 with, with uh, Darnold. He might get a fake injury, and then that's when Old Flacco comes in. Mm. I'm telling you, you man. can't make this up, man. <laughs> Somebody got the blueprint yeah. on this. I'm telling you. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, bro, I, I don't know about you, our run game. Mm-hmm. No. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to talk about talk to you about our running game. What do you What do you think? Do you think P Ryan gets a gets a couple of carries here, or how are you feeling it out? Do you think Gore out snaps him yet again, or what do you think is going on with our I running? Think, game? I th- I think I think no no matter what putting Adam Gates aside you know we uh, the the run game needs to get going because we need to see what we got in our you know our draft class that we just drafted this last year even though probably Mims ain't playing right mm-hmm. he's probably still out yeah Mims is not playing he's on yeah he's still he's still dealing with his injury Le'Veon is still dealing with his injury as well so so you know I, mean, I, I think I, I think it'll be a split carry in the backfield between. Um, uh, P. Ryan and obviously old Frank Gore, or reliable. So, yeah. um, but I but I would yeah. really like for them to kind of feature the offense to um, P. Ryan just to kind of see yeah. you know where he's at. You know how much of the offensive playbook he's absorbed. You know, maybe toss yeah, a yeah. couple balls out there in the flat to him. You know, let let, yeah. let me see what he got. Yeah, when you look at it defensively though, because we're going up against Brett Rippin. I mean. Shouldn't we just absolutely send blitzes at this guy all day and all night to just absolutely try to kill him? I mean, uh, is is the game plan defensively, is it anything different? <laughs> I mean, shouldn't we be trying to put pressure on this guy from the beginning of the game until the end, bro? Uh, no doubt. I mean, skip halftime. At halftime, they still blitz him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he, yeah, they, yeah. they need to be coming after him with everything. I mean – it, it's supposed to be uh, uh, what's his name? Our defensive coordinator. He's supposed to be this guru, right? I mean, yeah, tonight, yeah, tonight you yeah. want to let the NFL know that you still want to coach after the twenty twenty season. <laughs> yeah. He probably gone too. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So give me give me your final prediction uh, for the game, bro. Oh man, well we saw the two, we saw the safety last week, right? So if if Darnold stays the whole game. If Darnold stays the whole game, I gotta say ten four. Uh, the Colts, man, two safeties. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you have a you have Jesse. a good night, bro. It was great talking to you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good night, <laughs> bro. Calling in, he. <laughs> Bro, calling in, you know what I'm saying? He's he's upset as well with the with the state of the team and <laughs> how everything's panning out, how everybody's playing. Uh, you know, I want to thank him and salute to him for calling in. Uh, again, you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep going with the callers. I want to thank everybody for calling in. I will get to you folks in a second. I know there's a, quite a bit of people on the line, and I believe me, we will go through it. Uh, but I got to get to my chat guys as well. If you folks are calling in, listen, do not curse on my show. This is a family show, all right? You curse on my show too much, I'll get you out of here. I'll get you out of here as soon as possible. So please do not do that. Respect my show. Respect my platform. It's a family show. You want to curse in the chat, just your business. But do not curse live on my show. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank everybody for viewing me, uh, wherever you're viewing me from. I truly appreciate it. Uh, and, I, you know, I absolutely love talking to you folks. So let's get to the chat. Uh, John Haffey in the chat. Yo, John, salute to you. John says, Adam Gay should be fired tonight. Listen, John, I hear you. There's a lot of people that are screaming the exact same thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people going off, a lot of people that have, you know, some of the same things to say. Going to the next guy in the chat, Odin. Odin says, I low-key want the Jets to lose so Adam Gaze can get fired. <laughs> Odin, you know, Odin, salute to you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fans that are saying the exact same thing that you're saying. I've seen it across my social media timelines. I've seen it everywhere. There's a lot of fans screaming. We need to do whatever we can do to get this guy out of here. And there's a lot of fans hoping for a loss so that keeping Adam Gaze will just be completely inexcusable. Mr. Magic in the chat says, Gaze should be fired after a win tonight, too. Salute to you, Mr. Magic. Welcome to the stream. Listen, (laughs) I feel exactly the same way. I feel like no matter what the outcome of the game, he should be fired immediately after the game. He should be fired literally right as the game ends. They should just take this headset off before he could even give a handshake to the next coach and say, hey, don't worry, we'll take care of that handshake. I need you to go uh, go ahead and shake the hand of that Uber uh, guy that we have outside. He's going to put you in the car and take your ass out of here. So <laughs> that's how I feel. So my chat guys, please keep chatting. Uh, salute to y'all. You know what I'm saying? We'll come back to you in a second. But uh, I got to get back to these calls, all right? I got to get back to these calls. A lot of people banging my line. So I got to talk to them. A lot of fired up Jets fans. 
and they want to share their take. So 551-551, I'm coming to you. Let me know your thoughts on this game. Let me know who you are and where you're from. Five five one, okay. We lost five five one. Salute to him for calling in. Maybe he calls in next time. We'll uh, you know get some takes. He was probably so upset about this situation he didn't even want to say anything. He just said, "Man, forget it." I mean, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I'm so frustrated. I just <laughs> I'll just throw it away. So I'm gonna go to the next caller six four six six four six. I'm coming to you. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, you know, on this uh, Jets Broncos game. Let me know where you're from and uh, who you are. What's up, Long Beach Joe? How's it going, my man? What's going on? How's it going? Give me your name and where you're from. Joe, you think you'd know me for four years now. You would recognize my voice. <laughs> I know who you are, but the, the listeners don't, all right? Go ahead, Green. Let me know what's up, man. <laughs> well, okay. Well, for the listeners, of course, you guys don't know who I am. I am Gang Green David on YouTube. Uh, I've exactly. known Joe for a good four years. I've known good. I've known Joe for a good four years. Um, if you have not subscribed to Long Beach Joe, um, his insight is fantastic. So hit that like button Thank on the you. stream and sub up his channel for you. So going into this game, it's expected to be yet another disaster. I mean, two 0-3 teams battling it out just what you would want on a primetime football game. Uh, everybody's yeah. talking about Adam Gaze's job on the line, and the report came out this morning saying that Adam Gaze's job is not at stake, whether it's the media playing games or whether or not it's really true. I feel like it could actually be true because you know how Christopher Johnson is. And when I read that article this morning about Adam Gaze's job being at stake, I think I wanted to face palm when I read every word of it because I, um, something tells me that Ian Rappaport is in Adam Gaze's back pocket because of everything that he said in that article, saying that firing him would hurt the development of Sam Darnold. And I'm like, what, 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 are you serious, dude? He's hurting him. Adam Gaze is hurting this kid already. Like, come on, come on. This quarterback has regressed week in and week out ever since this guy got here. Sam Darnold has not been the consistent franchise quarterback that he was. And I'm not saying that it's, it's not all Sam Darnold's fault. He definitely deserves some blame for his reckless decisions. But the coaching does not help him. The practice squad wide receivers yeah. don't help him either. So this game is a bit – well, this game kind of relies on Adam Gaze because if you lose to a third-string quarterback who has little to no starting experience, then you should be out the door immediately. You should already be out the door immediately. But before, but if you lose on primetime football to a team with a ton of question marks and a third-string quarterback, fans are probably going to – fans are really going to start protesting outside Florham Park. Yeah. Yeah, David, look, I, I mean, you're, you're bringing the heat right now, man. I'm right there with you. I just – I do not understand how you look at this situation – and you think that firing Adam Gaze would be a hindrance to Sam Darnold. I just, <laughs> I'm beside myself. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand how that even factors into your brain when you think of, of firing Adam Gaze. That's completely ridiculous. If you see that a coach, <laughs> and, and this is not the first year that we've seen it, this is the second year where the offense looks just as bad as it did last year. And you have the long, illustrious history of him ruining players, ruining skill sets, not understanding how to utilize them, not being able to fit them within his system, not being able to adjust his system. You see What's all that. I mean, all – yeah, yeah, the system is a joke. But all of that in totality – I just don't understand how you see all of that in totality and not fix the situation by getting rid of him. I mean, does, doesn't that just scream to you – uh, David, that Chris Johnson is all about ego and not willing to budge, not willing to admit that he's wrong? Honestly, the thing about Christopher Johnson is that he's not just about ego. He's all about money. He's money hungry. That's all what he is because he's going to do anything in his power to try to get money for, for, from, from the fan base or what other NFL mm-hmm. fan bases or, or from the Jet fans. He's going to try to get money out of it because – I can't. Well, you know from experience, and I know from experience, I can't tell you how many games I've been to, and it's been nothing but opposing team fans. Because at the end of the day, this yeah. owner doesn't care who sits in the stands. He just cares about who's actually paying for the tickets and how he's getting his money. He's sitting behind a stack of cash while his fan base suffers on a weekly basis and gets laughed at by the media. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And so going into the game, David, because I want to talk to you about this game, and I want to start with the defense with you because they have some guys that, 
you know, they're not a spectacular team. Uh, this is a team that is hurting a bit uh, talent-wise, but they got Jerry Judy. And this was a guy I loved in the draft. Oh, man. <laughs> I love Jerry Judy, and I was hoping that we would be able to get him, uh, you know, by trading a specific person uh, for a first-round pick. But that didn't happen until after the draft, uh, which, you know, kind of hurt us as well. But how concerned are you about Jerry Judy and his matchup with our secondary? Because this is a kid that's already showing – a lot of promise in this league. Well, you, well, the secondary right now might be the weakest part of our defense. And you look at the way that they're playing, they're playing 10 yards off receivers. They're constantly letting them gain separation. They're getting open continuously. And Jerry Judy is that kind of player that can gain separation off of speed and he can get open and he will actually take off and use his speed. So no Corlin Sutton. You look at this Broncos offense, their best players right now are Noah Fant, Jerry Judy, yeah. and uh, Melvin Gordon. So what yeah. I see from the Broncos offense, they're going to try running the ball a lot. So I think this is going to come down to the front four trying to stop the run game. And then you, and I think I agree with what you said. You're probably going to have to blitz a lot and try to get to the quarterback because you start rattling this kid probably in his, what is it, his, this is his first or second start. You rattle this kid around, mm-hmm. you stop the run game, you could be good because – if you give like, – I don't care if this is a third-string quarterback because the Jets would be the kind of team that would allow a third-string quarterback to go off. We've seen it in the past. And with players like Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler too, I mean, Philip Lindsay's banged up though, but he's still got a power runner, Melvin Gordon, who could still do some things. Well, let's just face it. The front four is going to be the key for this game, and hopefully they can get some sort of pressure. Hopefully maybe Quinn Williams can bust up the middle, and hopefully he can get yeah. team to flourish. Uh, I, I think Jordan Jenkins might be active for tonight, and he's he's not going to be 100%. The second edge rusher is questionable, so you're kind of hoping that this defense can actually start making plays, and they they should they start tackling too. Like they cannot, they can't, they can't tackle a baby for crying out. Now I'm saying that they should tackle a baby, but like, like they're missing tackles, they're arm tackling, they're hat, they're 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 putting half effort. On. Yeah, the, the the effort there is bad, um, and I'm I'm right there with you, David. I, I look at this situation, and I'm saying to myself, like, you know, I'm looking at guys like uh, Marcus May, um, like you said, Quentin Williams as well. I need to see those guys step up and step out. I need to see them have, you know, big-time impacts here. I need to see them, you know, really put themselves in a position to make plays out there. And like you said, finishing tackles is huge. It's huge in this game. They've got to be able to finish plays. If you're not, if you, let me tell you something, you don't tackle Melvin Gordon well, and I understand, you know, he's been in this league a bit and he's dealt with some injuries. Dude, <laughs> he'll move, all right? And and you could see six. Like I said, uh, with Jerry Judy as well, you, you could see touchdowns as well. If you don't get this guy down, if you don't finish plays, if you don't tackle well, we're going to be in some trouble. And, again, like you said as well, bringing pressure to Rippin, bringing pressure to him, this is a guy that hasn't seen much time in the league. Look, we need to get after him immediately. I mean, this is the guy bringing pressure at. No questions asked. There should be a guy in his face constantly. He should be getting hit. He should be getting banged around. He should feel like he just has no room to breathe. Absolutely. Um, but I want to go to the offensive side of the ball with you. And I know that we talked about their, uh, we talked about us, you know, bringing pressure to their quarterback. When you look at our offensive line, David, are there any concerns to you if Becton doesn't play tonight? Are you concerned that maybe Chubb? Wow. Has a chance to go off? Well, actually, Makai Becton just got listed as active, so it looks like he might be playing okay, tonight. Okay, he's active now. Uh, okay. So, and that's actually huge because the, this, the Broncos front four with no Von Miller and Jarrell Casey now being on IR, and I know they still got some players mm-hmm. over there, but you could start attacking their weak points with their running backs because you go back to mm-hmm. the Colt game last week, you kind of saw some kind of contribution from the running backs. I mean – Hopefully you don't run Frank Gore up the middle 300 times because that, that seems to be Adam Gates' specialty. But I'll be honest, like, as much as it kind of hurts me to say a little bit, start using Kalen Balazs a little more. He's seen pretty solid out of the backfield catching passes. Get a Michael Pinerai involved and start attacking the weak points of that front four with the run game. Because if you can attack yeah. the left side, which is, Mekhi, which is, which is where you're, it's your best side right now because Mekhi Becton has probably been the best player in your offense so far. So you want, if you're going to use your running back to be innovative enough to create a balanced offense, 
start running on the left side. You can run up the middle, too, at, from, from time to time again, because Jarrell Casey is a run-stopping lineman. He can make plays against the run, especially up the middle, because he's an interior D lineman. Um, you, can, you can actually run up the middle a little more as well. So that way it could open up opportunities for a play action. You've got Crowder now back. He's probably going to be taking limited reps because he might not be 100%, and uh, you know he's trying to give it a go because the Jets really needed Crowder. Uh, Jeff Smith just came yep. off IR. Got Lawrence Kager, too. I mean, this is a player who's still got some work to do to try to gain chemistry with Darnold because that Colt game, I mean, they were off a little bit. And then you have Braxton Berrios, too, probably your best receiver so far, who's, who Sam's really worked pretty well with. So <laughs> I like to see those guys get involved. And can we also see Chris Herndon finally do something? Because the guy's been amazing exactly. appointment so far. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking to see that as well. I'm looking to see Herndon. Uh, and Griffin get involved in this offense as well. Like you said, Herndon has been, you know, pretty disappointing so far. So I need to see those guys, you know, really step up and and become a bigger part of the offense, especially with the play calling. Uh, So, David, man, what are your thoughts on this game? Give me your final prediction. Um, I think I I originally had the Jets win this game. And to be honest, I'm still going to go by it because this is probably the most winnable game the Jets have on their schedule. I'm going, to say, I'm going to stick with my score prediction that I predicted at the beginning of the season, and I'm going to say the Jets were 24-17. 24-17? 24-17 Jets? Yes. All right. Listen. Listen, David picking those Jets. Look, I hear you. Again, I want to thank you for calling in, David. Go ahead and plug all your, your YouTube and your social media, man, because you're doing a lot of great things on your channel. I appreciate that, man. So if you guys want to check me out on YouTube, I am Gangrene David on YouTube. I will also be going live for the Jet Bronco game tonight. I do post-game videos. I do pre-game videos. Um, my channel is filled with analysis, reactions, um, vlogs, live streams. So I got all kinds of stuff over there. You can follow me on Twitter at Gangrene David one You can follow me on TikTok at Gangrene David one You can follow me on Instagram at Gangrene underscore David. Um, you can also join my Discord server. The link is in my description if you watch my videos down below. And, of course, if you're not subscribed to Long Beach Show, what are you guys waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Click the uh, – join his channel. You know, the, the, the guy's an intelligent football fan trying to grow his channel. He's almost at 630 subscribers. Before we know it, he'll get to 1,000. And, Joe, we got to do <laughs> another roundtable coming up. we got to do another roundtable soon, man, because we got a lot sure. to talk about with season being a quarter of the way done. Yeah, for sure, man. A- anytime. Again, hit me up, man. I want to I wanna thank you again for calling in, David, man. You're great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Likewise, dude, try to enjoy the game and hope to God that Adam Gates is fired by the next morning because it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> All right. You have a good night, David. Good night, Dan. Listen, gangrene David calling in, you know what I'm saying, knows his stuff, big-time Jets fan. Uh, if you haven't checked the channel out, please do. That guy, you know, he, he, he knows what he's talking about, and he brings the fire. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to get to the chat really quickly. I got some callers. I'll get right back to the callers, 917 and then 551. I'll be coming to you soon. Uh, but I'm going to get to the chat because let me tell you something. The chat is going off right now. Again, if you are listening to me on Blog Talk Radio or on iTunes or wherever you're listening to my audio portion from, I also live stream during the chat. So my chat guys, man, they go off. They absolutely go off. I mean, they go crazy in the chat. So we're going to get to some of the comments. Uh, Broadway John, Broadway John, salute to you, says Broncos might be starting a third string QB, but they still have Jerry Judy, Noah Fant, and Melvin Gordon, so the defense got to be ready. That's a fact, Broadway. That's a fact. I mean, you can't sleep on this team. We can't. I mean, hell, look at the way that we've looked. I don't think we can sleep on any team. (laughs) Like, who are we to be sleeping on anybody? Like, we should be prepared. You know what I mean? Like, it it doesn't matter who the opponent is, who, how bad we think they're going to be. Like, we should be ready for a team to come in here because we haven't looked good, you know, this season. It's just completely ridiculous. Going back to the chat, Jet Black. Jet Black says they're going to dust us. Our secondary sucks. <laughs> uh, you know, there's some things, there's some improvements that could be made. You know what I'm saying? Some improvements to be made. Uh, the secondary has been suspect at times, like I said, especially in this game. I'm looking for big things out of Marcus May. I need to see Marcus May be more consistent. And this is a game where I think he can have a big impact. Uh, Broadway John says, if Greg Williams can't come up with a game plan to attack a third string practice squad QB, then he should be shown the door along with Gaze. I know there's a lot of people that are starting to turn the heat up on him a little bit. I will say that. Uh, I know, you know, Greg Williams has done a lot of great things. 
and with the defense he's being able to work around. But we've seen us get really gashed defensively. The Colts beat us up really bad uh, defensively. There were guys running wide open. The Niners game, the, I mean, the, the running plays, it was it was pretty bad. So I see people turning up the heat on him as well. So now I'm going to cut, cut from the chat. I want to thank you folks for chatting. Please keep chatting. I'll come back to you. I'm going to get back to these calls. Uh, 917, I'm coming to you. Let me know where you're from, your name, and what are your thoughts about this Jets and Broncos game? Joe, what's up, man? This is Elias from Rochester. How are you doing, man? I'm all right, Elias. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Uh, kind of excited for the game, kind of not. I'm more excited for tomorrow for the hopeful good news, but um, it's looking like that's not going to happen. But I still think there's a big chance it'll happen. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I, I hear you. But let's say if it doesn't happen, you know, what are your thoughts about this stuff coming out? If it doesn't happen and he doesn't fire Gabe, to you, does that just signal Chris Johnson just being an e- egotistical maniac? Like he will not admit that he's made a mistake by hiring Gabe? 100%. He's a god off owner. And I'm an absolute diehard Mets fan. And it's the best feeling in the world finding out we're getting a new owner who's worth as much as him. So. I really hope one day the Jets will get a new owner, but, man, like, you make mistakes, dude. Just, like, just say, okay, this was a bad idea. Let's move on. And it's just it's frustrating that we're potential franchise quarterbacks just regress every week when they got this idiot yeah, running the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. And that brings me to my first question. You kind of started to touch on it, but how concerned are you about Sam Darnold going into this game? Do you think he'll be able to bounce back? Uh, from the last bad game he had, or how do you feel about, you know, him going into this game, period? So I do think he'll play better. I think the Broncos do have a good defense, but I think especially when healthy, which isn't fully healthy right now, and then the Colts have a better defense at least statistically. So I think he'll bounce back. I'm Mm -hmm. worried about Besson not playing. I think if he doesn't play, does that mean Sand slides over to left tackle and then you go and don't get it right? Because I did not trust. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, we just got a got an update. I think uh, Beckton's been put on the active uh, roster, so it looks like he's going to play. We just got an update on. Sweet. This. Okay. That's good news. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, yeah, um, but I, I was concerned the exact same way. Like with Sam, I don't expect anything enormous, and like I think he'll just do the you know the crap game plan, just a ton of short passes, a ton of screens, a ton of boring stuff like that. Uh, hopefully mm-hmm. he'll be able to do some make like that insane play he made last week was incredible. Uh, hopefully we see some yeah. good stuff like that. Personally, I'm in the group of fans that I sort of want them to lose this week, just <laughs> make it seem like because this is the perfect time to fire Gates because you got ten days until your next game. So like if you're not going to fire mm-hmm. him now, are you, you're going to have to wait all the way to the bye week or something, man. And I just hope yeah. I hope Sam balls out and then. The receivers just drop everything or like fumble it or something, just so I don't know, just so we don't win, or they just outplay us. <laughs> but I, what I don't want is just a, a practice squad third stringer outplaying Sam, man. That that would suck. Yeah, yeah, and, and I hear you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm always in for a Jets victory, but I do understand. Uh, the mindset of some fans that are saying, hey, listen, we just want to lose so we can get gays the hell out of here as soon as possible uh, to make it, you know, inexcusable for you to keep them. And I get that. But just sticking with the with the offense, when you look at the situation of wide receiver, you brought up uh, some names there. But with Crowder coming back, it looks like he's going to be out there playing. What are your expectations of him in this game coming off that injury? Um, Like, I don't think I, you don't really expect like anything phenomenal from him. He's a you know, solid slot receiver, but I think coming back mm-hmm. from injury he might be a little bit limited, but he's definitely the best receiver we have on the roster right now. And I'm pretty sure um, mm-hmm. Jeff Smith, got, which I don't really expect much from him, but I know he got activated, so maybe he is, – is Hogan playing or not? Yeah, I think Hogan's questionable. I don't know if he's been activated at all yet. Okay. Dude, I think so. this game is just going to be – it's just going to be a special teams battle. It's going to be, it's just going to be three, third and out, punt. And that, that's why we activated uh, Gidry, because he's, like, ridiculously fast. So just put him as the return and hope they score that way. <laughs> well, so let, let's go to the defensive side of the ball with you, because you're bringing the fire talking about the offense. But how concerned are you about them using Melvin Gordon 
and just absolutely running the ball down our throats. Because this is this is a Broncos team that can still, you know what I'm saying, they can run. They, they got some guys up front that can move people out of the way. And Melvin Gordon is still a back that can, you know, be successful. So how, are you, how concerned are you about their running game? Dude, it's annoying because coming into the season, it was supposed to be that we were a great defense against the run. The defensive line and the inside linebackers are supposed to be our, like, strong point, and they've been awful this year, especially the inside linebackers. Mm. So I, I'm extremely yeah. worried. I think Melvin Ford is a pretty good running back, too. And I know Phil yeah. Lindsay, she's not playing right. Yeah, he, yeah, he, I don't believe he is either. But they also got Noah Fant as well at tight end. Are you concerned, right. especially yeah. when you talked about our, our linebackers, are you concerned about us being able to cover him? Yeah, like, seeing that – I like Marcus May, but seeing that he struggled against the dude on the Niners with Reed, I'm, I'm yep. pretty worried about yep. you know, The dude I'm really worried about is Jerry Judy because this defense is I – mean, our secondary is so bad, man. It, it's like it's like they're playing his own coverage, but they're just standing still. Like, every mm. – I you just look, and then it's just – like last year, last week, Rivers was just throwing it, and the guys were so open, and you got a guy who's like an incredible route runner like him. And then you got, obviously got a – KJ Hamler too. He's he's super fast. He's gonna be he's a slot receiver, I believe. Which obviously we got Ryan Pole. He's pretty good. But uh, yeah, man, I, this secondary has been so bad this year, dude. I want this year cut so bad. Like give some of the yeah. young, one of the younger guys. A shot. And I think we yeah we cut Harrison today too. But I just mm-hmm. going to start anyways. So yeah, hopefully yeah. Yeah. Austin can do a decent job against Judy. But I, I expect to get torched. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's your final do, score? Like, what's oh, your final, final score, score for the game? Um, yeah. Twenty fourteen Denver. Ooh, twenty fourteen Denver. I hear you. Well, <laughs> I know some fans that feel we'll the exact same way that you time. do. I think we'll get like a garbage time touchdown. Uh, maybe Sam will flash a good play in the first part of the game, but man, I don't really expect too much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's understandable, man. Uh, again, I want to thank you for calling in, man. You have a good night. Absolutely. You too, man. Enjoy again. All right, time to eat. Peace. Whew. Wyatt's calling in, man. He's, he's he's taking Denver as well. There's a lot of fans that feel the exact same way. Um, you know, oh, it's just tough, man. It's really tough to have hope with this football team just in the situation that it's in. I'm going to go to the chat really quickly. Again, I want to thank everyone for calling. I will continue to move through the calls, 551-732-516. Uh, uh, I will get to you folks as soon as I come back uh, to the calls. Uh, but, again, I'm going back to this chat. Again, I want to thank everyone for calling in tonight, talking to me. Uh, please do not curse when you call into my show. I'll get you out of here as soon as possible. It's a family show. You know what I'm saying? So call in, share your takes, and let me know, you know what your thoughts are. But, uh, man, it, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty tough here. Um, so I'm going to get to this chat. Uh, Steven, the chat says, man, I couldn't care less about this game, Joe. I'm fading. <laughs> Listen, you know, <laughs> I understand. And I want to welcome you to the stream. I get it. You know, there's a lot of fans as well that, that have checked out too. Um, you know, I love this team. I don't want to check out. I, I, I'm not going to check out, but I understand it. I, I completely understand it. Uh, but, man, it, it's tough when you look at the decisions that are being made or the decisions that are not being made that can really better this franchise and it just not happen. It's just it's just not good. So we're going to go we're going to go back to the callers. Five, five, one, five, five, one. You're next up. Let me know your name, where you're from and your thoughts on this uh, Broncos game. Five, five, one. All right, 551, he just, you know, he's he's fed up. You know what I'm saying? He clearly is so upset. You know, he's just like, hey, (laughs) I'm tired of it. So we're going to go to 732-732. Give me your thoughts. And you're going to give me your thoughts on the game. Give me your name and where you're from. Caller, go ahead. Hello? Yes, 516, go ahead. Oh, that's me. Um, Yeah, my name is Jared. I'm from Long Island, New York. Um, mm-hmm. um, in terms of my thoughts on the game, well, first of all, I think we do need to get rid of Sam, and it's not because of a lack of talent. 
I would recommend you go okay. and watch. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Strong Opinion Sports that I would highly recommend watching. He has some really great takes on the Jets. But I want to hear your insight on what you think of tonight's game. Okay. Well, uh, well, first off, again, I want to thank you for calling in. But I want to go to your point about getting rid of Sam, and I want to figure out why. You know, what exactly – why exactly do you want to get rid of Sam, and, and, you know, what do you want to get rid of him for? Okay. So – the reason why is that in football, the most important thing is culture. You know this, and I know this. You need a culture change in the organization. Sam Darnold has been scarred by this organization. He's extremely talented. Yes, he has flaws. Problem is, is that the organization has failed him. I simply think he cannot succeed in this toxic environment. Trading him to a team like Pittsburgh Indianapolis, I think, would be a good option. And bringing in Trevor Lawrence not only could be a better option, obviously Gase gets fired either way, unless the Jets are stupid, which is highly likely. But what my theory is is that if we draft Lawrence, not only could it be a better option, it's an entire culture change. The standard raises once you bring in a generational talent. Plus, you have another deep receiver class. There's this guy from Ohio State named Chris Olavi that I really like. Put him on the but, outside. But, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I, and I hear I hear your point. I don't I don't mean to uh, to, to to chop in, but I really want to want to touch on this point with you. I hear what you're saying about culture changer and and a generational talent, but I remember when we drafted Sam Darnold. The Sam Darnold was that guy. And so if you think that there's an issue with the culture here, right, you, you, you clearly said yourself, you think that, you know, that Sam Darnold is talented enough. What, what, what exactly would you get? What do you think you could get from the Steelers for Sam Darnold? Maybe a first-round pick, two first-rounders? No. You're thinking, right? I would probably. What do you think you can get? Look, from? Probably get a second and a fourth-round pick. That's honestly not <laughs> bad value, and it's realistic. I get it. Okay. <laughs> well, bad, listen, it, but, it, yeah, it, it does because the thing is, is if you're – first of all, I think you would get more than that for Sam Darnold. If you listen to any analyst across the board, even the ones that aren't like <laughs> Jets, you know, homers, they will tell you that the kid's talented and we've seen it. If I you know, think but, that the franchise is – yeah, if you think that the franchise has broken him, isn't, the, isn't it the responsibility to fix what's going on around him instead of just getting rid of him? How does that help him? How does that help the team? It doesn't help us at all, it now, helps, does it? It helps the team uh, because you're bringing in a new face. That 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 you're a, bringing in a new face, but you're putting him in the same situation because we still would have issues with is, no weapons. They have, what? You, but you're not. The, the thing is, you, once Mims gets healthy, we put Mims on the outside. We run Crowder in the slot, and we get this Olavi guy that I really like out of Ohio State put him on the outside that so once our receivers are healthy like we have weapons the thing is all of them are hurt like our receivers are Braxton Berrios and Josh Malone it's because we're all hurt we just need a good number three another outside receiver well I I would okay I, I would disagree I don't think we have weapons I think Mims you're counting Mims as a weapon and Mims is a rookie we don't exactly know what he is Right, we're all excited about him. We're all hoping that he'll turn out to to be the guy, but he hasn't played yet, and he hasn't done anything outside of him. There's no one else on this roster. I mean, Le'Veon Bell, you can be concerned, but Le'Veon Bell not utilized correctly, so he's he's taken out with the game plan every single week, right? So he's not an effective weapon every single week. So there's no weapons on this team, none. And I hear what you're saying. I, you know, I, I understand that you're 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 in love with Trevor Lawrence, but if you were to put anyone in this situation. You would see no success out of them as well, and I think just going to get I Trevor think, Lawrence and just trading a, a top pick for him or or using our top pick on him, I think would be a bad idea. I think you should take that pick. You, you even said yourself that we are, that we have issues with weapons. If you take that top pick that we get and you get a king's ransom back to trade down to you know utilize that stuff for for you know, the capital that we need, the capital necessary to build around this football team, to build around Sam Donald, you'd be better off than just drafting Trevor Lawrence. I know. Because we've I seen, the, ta- we've seen the talent. Look, I've seen it. I've seen it too. And I, we could go that way too. I would not be mad either way. But the thing is, who would trade up? And how far can you trade back? Because the guy I'm eyeing oh, no. is someone like 
How far can you trade Let back? Let me tell you. And who are you going to trade back? Let with? me tell you. The Bears, the Bears traded up for Mitch Trubisky, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and they gave up a lot. I could, I could name, I could name teams from here, <laughs> you know, that are quarterback needy. Listen, quarterback needy teams in the league, they will move up. And if you can get a King's ransom, which I believe is what we can get, I if you could get a King's play. ransom for him, all right. So, so if you can get that, I would take that plan over just drafting Trevor Lawrence, especially when you know what? you're I telling me you that, hey, if, if, you can, if you can get rid of Gaze and get him out of here and get a real offensive mind, uh, Eric Benimi or whoever else, you know, that you, you, you covet out there, and you can bring that guy in here to work with Sam, work with the offense, and get the ship righted also with more weapons, I'll take that scenario over any other scenario. You know what? And I completely see where you're coming from. It, it's a difficult decision to make. I, I don't blame you. And, and if we were to trade back, my preferred player would be that guy, Jamar Chase, the guy who just destroyed Clemson in the national championship last year. That would be my preferred pick. It's whatever Joe Douglas wants to do, though, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. It's not in our control, but yeah. it's up, it's up yeah. to Joe I mean, Douglas and the Jets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I want to go to the game, uh, talk to you about the game tonight, because let me tell you something. These matchups are incredible. I want to get your thoughts on this defense going up against Brett Rippon. I mean, can, don't you just think we should just absolutely send pressure at this guy and try to rip his head off? We have, we have no – that's another problem and why I go back to the draft and think that we need edge talent. I watch these guys every week start to finish somehow. I don't know how I do it, but – I manage, and based on, I don't know how I watch these guys from start to finish, but what I see is, I mean, against the Bills, their pass rush was horrible. Josh Allen, there were multiple times where he got five, six, seven seconds in the pocket. Like, I play, I'm in high school right now, I play varsity, and it's, it's a simple formula. Take the snap, three step drop back, one, two, throw. And if you don't get that out, the rule is you're going to take a sack. And that's not what's going on with our pass rush. And when you have a lack of pass rush, your, your secondary and your coverage gets weaker the longer the quarterback has the ball. Yeah, 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 yeah I hear you. I, I mean, the, the pass rush is, is pretty bad. It's, it's pretty bad. And, there, and there's definitely some some – some more talent that needs to be added on that spot. But that's, you know, again, that's coming up in this offseason, and we'll see what happens. But uh, give me your thoughts on the running game as well, because I'm concerned about Melvin Gordon, uh, you know, them loading up and kind of running down our throats because we've seen that we have issues stopping that as well. Are you as concerned about it as I am? Um, I really like Melvin Gordon. I mean, no Philip Lindsay. That hurts them, obviously, tonight. But I'm actually pretty big on Melvin Gordon. I think the Broncos are really dumbed down by injury, as is the Jets. But Melvin could run us over. We have no idea. But honestly, our run defense was one of the best in the league last year. Don't forget that. It's really our passing defense and our pass rush that's the main problem. Yeah. 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 So, uh, again, I want to thank you for calling in. But give me your final prediction for the game, my friend. Uh, My final prediction. I'm going. I'm going with another offensive disaster. I'm. It's going to be really bad. The final score, oh. ten to seven, Broncos. It's going to be horrible. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm, I I'm want to thank you at. for calling in, man. You, you have a good night. You too, Joe. Take care. Uh, all right. See. You. Oh man, that caller was. You know, I understand. You know, people love Trevor Lawrence. I get it. You know, I, I think he's a, a you know a fabulous guy. He's going to be a fabulous quarterback. But for me, you know, if you're calling in talking about getting rid of Sam Darnold because there's an issue, you know, with the culture, and I've I've, I've had this discussion with so many people, it's it's crazy. A lot of people say the exact same thing. They just do not think he's going to be able to be successful here, um, and that we should trade him to another franchise because they'll make sure, you know, that he's <laughs> that he's a winner. And it's just like, listen, if we all know that the talent's there and he's a winner. Uh, and we all see that. Why would you give him to a franchise, you know, that, that has had success, that understands how to breed winners? Why wouldn't you, you know, with your franchise, 
keep him and figure out how to be a winner yourself. (laughs) If the culture is toxic, you change the culture. You know, you don't just start getting rid of guys that have, that could help you, that could help your culture. You know, get, get rid of that first round pick. Even if we get a high one, which it looks like we will be, we get a high first round pick. And you know, if Trevor Lawrence is even around there, Get trade down, get a king's ransom, and do whatever you can to put talent around Darnold. That's what you got to do, and you got to get rid of this bum ass head coach Adam Gaze. You got to. You, it, we're killing him. I mean, we're killing him. I mean, and then to just sit back and talk about that you're keeping Gaze. Is, <laughs> listen, folks, I hear you. All right, I, you know I don't like it as much as you don't like it either. I mean, it's ridiculous. Chris Johnson just. <laughs> Boo, Chris Johnson. Boo to you, you know. So I'm going to go I'm gonna go to the chat really quickly. Uh, we're going to talk to the chat for a second. When I come back, uh, 732, you'll be next up. <sighs> chat, Christopher Cancel in the chat. Salute to you, Christopher. Christopher says, fire Gaze and Chris Johnson and let the fans take over. We know more. No excuses. <laughs> Christopher's fed up, and I understand it. <laughs> I understand the anger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's tough, man. I understand, yo, we can't fire owners, but if we could, oh, the Johnsons would be first on my list to be, you know, get the ax and get the hell out of here. It'd be it'd be completely ridiculous. Uh, so I'm going to keep going with the chat, Sir Toon. Sir Toon says, the Jets should let me coach the offense for a game. I could use that check as well. <laughs> Sir Toon, man, salute to you. Listen, <laughs> I mean, I guess. Uh, I, I, could you be any worse than Gaze? <laughs> I don't think so. It seems like he's not paying attention to the game at all. So, you know, maybe somebody that just would even look at the field and figure things out, you know, we'd be much better off with. You know what I'm saying? And it's just it's just mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. But I'm going to get back to these callers. Chat guys, keep please keep chatting. I'm going to come back to you. 732, I'm coming to you. I want to get your thoughts on this game. Give me your location and your name. Hey, Long Beach Show. This is Tim from New Jersey. How are you? Tim, how's it going, man? I'm I'm, I'm all right. You know, <laughs> I've been better, but <laughs> man, this, this team is taking a toll on me, Tim. It's taking a toll on me. I'm trying my best. You know, I'm sticking with it. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep bringing y'all content. We're going to keep having streams, but man, it is really killing me, bro. And it, it, what Ooh, kills me so- is, and I'm going to start off with you. Is this this report that we're starting to hear from certain people about gays not being fired no matter what happens tonight? Give me your thoughts on that, man. Well, first of all, I, let me just start by saying, and, and I hope you don't mind, but I'm just going to name drop uh, something I've been watching. So there's this there's this cat out there by the name of Flem, Flemlo Raps. Have you heard of this guy? No, a, I haven't. Uh, so he's a channel that does like where are they now NFL backstories, right? So I've been watching them. Oh, I've, all I've week. heard I mean, of those. I've heard of those though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of these are tear jerkers, right? And what I've been seeing in this past, you know, season, basically the last three games and last season, of course, I basically have flashes of of where where are they now for like Sam Darnold because of how much he is oh. getting ruined by Adam Gates organization right now. Like every single week. Just when I think it can't get lower, it gets lower. And you know what? Last week I called in and I said the media was going to double down on Sam Darnold, being, maybe not, you know, having to improve. And they and they did to a certain extent, but not as hard as I thought they would, which was good to see. But when I read Ian Rappaport's article, which was very timely, I might add, which came out earlier today, at you know, obviously yep. leading up leading up to the game where. Everyone knew that outside of major media outlets, this is what the, the the main topic of discussion was, was getting Gase out the door. It wasn't even – the discussion wasn't even a matter of getting Gase out the door as much as it was, does he go now or does he go after Denver? And what we all found out abruptly before this big game is that it doesn't matter. Now, I, I don't know if I – I don't know if I believe that article – quite quite honestly um mm-hmm. i just feel like it's too it's too timely it's too coincidental it came out you know i feel like it was just one of those things that was meant to sort of even the playing field in a way i i'm holding out hope joe that 
this was this was a strategy to get Gase to put his best foot forward in this game with the idea that if he puts his best foot forward and fails miserably, that he gets fired immediately. That's what I'm holding out hope mm. for, given, given yeah. the Ian Rappaport article, because yeah. there really is no hope for an immediate fire at this point. And frankly, if it's true, verbatim, that article, then I just don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm and, just and speechless. Tim, like totally I said, again, speechless. I want to, yeah, I, I, again, I want to thank you for calling in. I, and I hear you. I, I'm, I said as well, you know, there there had been other reports that he lost everything. He's lost the locker room. He's lost the confidence of the front office. There was reports that, you know, Colin Cowherd was talking about it, that the Jets have already called other coaching agents and said, hey, look, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they've been asking around to see, if, you know, sniffing around. But, again, we get this article, and, and, I, and I get it. I, I'm not all the way sold. But we've seen the Jets do dumb stuff like this before. Remember when they doubled down last year when we should have fired him? And he came out mm-hmm. and said, no matter what happens, he's still going to be here the rest of the season? It's like, what? I just <laughs> don't know. You know, that was unbelievable to me. I don't know, man. I don't know if there's a bullet. Now I'm starting to think. Now I'm starting to come up with conspiracy theories because, you know, you know when things don't make sense, you just have to start getting imaginative. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm thinking yeah. that there's some kind of, there's some kind of weird bully culture, like in the back room between like uh, uh, what's his face, Douglas and Gase and uh, and and Johnson, right? So like Chris Johnson's like going to the like get some water from the water jug and like Douglas like knocks it out of his hand and he's like. We're yeah. the, you know, we're the boss around here. You know what I'm saying, Johnson? You, you just go back in your little office. We, you do what we say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm start, starting to come up Man, with these it, scenarios. Man, it's crazy. Like, in what world does yeah, this it, make sense? And, and that's really, yeah. that's what, I mean, it's just insane. I, I don't get it. I, if he loses yeah. tonight, if he loses tonight and he doesn't get fired, let's say they get blown out by 30 points. Because quite honestly, I think everybody's underestimating the Denver offense or – overestimating the Jets' defense because we've been Swiss cheese. And if, if it's not like if, – if our run defense is the only thing that we're looking to right now, what happens if they just put Melvin Gordon out as a receiver or, you know, out of the backfield and throw passes to him on, like, on screens, whatever? We're going to have a hard time. Yeah. Our, uh, our, oh. our D-backs have not, have not been doing well. And, and you know, May, unfortunately, I, as much as I love him and I'm pulling for him, he he's just he's not as stout as a presence as Jamal Adams was back there, and you know, and I'm not I'm not making any comment on on the Adams situation. It is what it is, is what I mm-hmm. say on this. You know, we've talked yeah. about that. You know, ad ad, ad nauseum. But but you know, I, I, I'm hoping May steps up in a way where, you know, maybe he can start getting some more turnovers. That would be nice. Um, just yeah. maybe. <laughs> Maybe not getting blown out by as many points per game. Um, that, that, that would be cool. great. It would be cool if, like, our quarterback wasn't running for his life constantly. Like, oh my I goodness, mean, John McClain and Die Hard. I mean, that's Sam Darnold in every game. Like, you know, do I do I step over the glass and throw the ball, or do I take like a concussion sack? You know what I mean? It's like this poor kid. I, I, and then he looks over to Gates and he's like, "Hey, but, hey, I think I think I'm gonna get concussed on this play because they definitely know what we're doing." He's like, "Well, you know the rules, Darnold. You know the rule. No audible. You, you take that no. hit, son. You take that hit. You get back what up." Is your, what, is, what is your final prediction for the game, my man? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna give Darn. I, I I think in some way somebody on the Jets has to step up tonight. And I think maybe they will. So I'm going to give them a little bit of points. And by a little bit, I'm going to say seven or, uh, well, I'll go 10 points for the Jets. And I'm going to go 20-24 okay. for Denver. <clears throat> oh, man. <laughs> Tim taking Denver to win as well. Well, thank you again for calling in, Tim. Hope to hear from you on my next uh, show, man. You're the greatest. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you. All right, you have a good night. Woo! Tim calling in. He's he's he set the set the show ablaze as well. Great takes. I'm gonna get to this chat, then I'm gonna come back to the calls. Uh, three four seven and two zero two. You'll be uh, the last calls when I come back. 
Again, I want to thank everybody for calling in tonight. The lines were blazing. Um, you know what I'm saying thank you. I'll get to everybody, you know, that I can. You know what I'm saying? So uh, getting to the chat, Rafael Gonzalez says, people forget Sam is the second youngest starting QB in the NFL. That's what's crazy. Uh, you know, people are acting like he's 35 or something. <laughs> you know, when I have callers calling in, and, I, you know, I respect everybody's takes, but I can also respectfully disagree. You know, if you feel like this kid, you know, and he literally is a kid. He's so young. <laughs> um, you know, you feel like this this guy, you know, you, like you're going to throw him away after a couple years. He's not even out of his rookie year deal yet. You've never given him anything to prove whether he's good or not. But we've still seen flashes. We've still seen that he's getting better even with us not doing what we should be doing to surround him with talent. Just completely mind-blowing, man, completely mind-blowing. Uh, Husker fan says, cut that caller off. Sam's the answer. <laughs> so I, I hear you. Husker, I want to salute to you, and, uh, you know, thank you for, for being in the stream. Listen, I hear you. I, I don't understand it. I understand – well, actually, I understand why people want Trevor Lawrence. That's just kind of the culture here. Just go get another quarterback. But that's not how we should be handling business. We finally got the guy that can really help our franchise out. We finally got a guy that can turn things around. It's like, why would you throw him away, especially when you've given him nothing? You haven't given him anything to be successful yet. It's just it's completely mind-blowing. So I'm going to get back to these calls. 347-347, uh, three, four, three, four, give me your name, your location, and what are your thoughts about this Jets-Broncos game? Hello? Yes, uh, give me your name and your location, my man. Hi, my name is Rich Diaz. How's it going, Rich? Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, on this on this game? What are your thoughts about Sam Darnold? Well, I just want to say first and foremost, I just recently subscribed to your YouTube channel, and it's funny how uh, the way I found you was I just typed in the search bar "fire Adam Gase" and you were the first video that came up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's a true story. <laughs> well, well, thank you again. Thank you for calling in. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, and thank you for watching my content or even searching for it. I truly appreciate that, and I am so proud that I am the first person that you saw when you typed in those letters, all right, because I'm all about that. Get his ass out of here. You know what I'm saying? But continue on. (laughs) Well, you know what? I've been a Jets fan all of my life, 30 years plus, and uh, I lived through the rich Coltide era somehow. Oh. Um, But I don't – I – how do I see it being darker now and just a year and change of Adam Gates? So the one mm. history lesson that I've always had as a Jets fan is that when there's a brand new quarterback that's playing his first game against the Jets, he's a star for some reason. We're the only team that <laughs> made Johnny Manziel look credible, if you remember. Oh, so, I remember that. So, so unfortunately, I see this being a uh, blowout for the Broncos, uh, mostly because it'll probably be uh, the defense getting turnovers from the Jets' offense. Because, unfortunately, that's what what it's been. I mean, last week, two pick sixes, a pick in the end zone. What else else could happen? And uh, to go the other way for a second on Adam Gase, if you you fire Adam Gase right now, you're only appeasing us, the Jets fans, because we want him gone. But in mm-hmm. reality, there's people out there that are I'm, – I'm on board with you, by the way, that Sam Darnold is our guy. He should be our guy. We just have the wrong coach. So yeah, uh, there's, there's people on board that's like, hey, well, you know, we could get Trevor Lawrence and we could get uh, the offensive coordinator from Kansas City to be our coach next year, and that will be the dynamic duel for the next – 15 years or whatever in the NFCs, or excuse me, AFCs. But the thing is, just at this rate, they're not going. They're not going to get rid of Gates. They're just going to just ride that losing train out because this has all been, as you said in one of your videos, the Jets loser culture, and it starts from the top. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at the way look at the way they, they structure their hiring. The general manager oh. doesn't have say so over who's the coach. The coach yeah. doesn't have say so over who the coordinators are. So and they both what, report what to the it? owner. Yeah, um, <laughs> that at this rate, given his track record, <laughs> I could have my eighty-year-old grandmother be the owner, and and, and she could probably do a better job. So oh, yeah, 
It's just ridiculous. And yeah. unfortunately, yeah. I see us making this uh, this Brett kid tonight a star, and then he'll probably oh. who knows he'll, he'll he'll he might go one in fifteen this year, but the one win will be against us. Yeah. So could you give me uh, give me your final prediction for the game? Well, I'm going to be a little nicer than the last caller, and I'm going to say the Jets score <laughs> 17 points, right? Oh, to yeah. about, and I and I'll give I'll give the Jets 17, and I give the Broncos like 30. And oh. and and, <laughs> and and I predict 21 of that's going to be on pick sixes or turnovers or fumbles that they run oh. back. And they'll just kick oh three offensive field goals, probably. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you for calling in, and thank you for watching my content as well. I understand where you're coming from, though, my friend. All right, thanks for having me on, and I'll keep watching. All right, thank you so much. You have a good night. Oh, man, Rich calling in. Listen, Rich, salute to you again. Thank you for watching my content. Thank you for listening to my content. Anybody that found me, you know, from searching fire gaze, I want to thank you because I'm all about it. Okay, I'm Mr. Fire Gaze, all right? Look, it, it's tough, man. It's tough. A lot of Jets fans taking the Broncos. Um, I'm going to get back to these callers in just a second, uh, 202-347. Uh, I'm coming to you in a second. I'm just going to get to the chat really quickly. Omar in the chat says, weekly therapy session on a Thursday night. <laughs> I'll meet Joe. What's going on? Yo, salute to you, Omar. Listen, it is what it is. It's tough being a Jets fan. It's tough being a Jets fan out here, and I'm, you know, I'm all about talking about it and trying to get it out the best way that we can. I understand the anger. I understand the vitriol. I get it because this, this franchise is in big trouble. So I'm going to get back to the callers, 202-202. I'm coming to you. Let me know what, uh, your name, where you're from, and your thoughts about this game. Uh, it's Nate from Virginia, the Bulls fan from last time. Oh, what's, what's going on? How's it going, Nate? Eh? It's going good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. What are your thoughts about this Jets game? This, uh, you know, we're going up there against the Broncos. How do you feel about Sam Darnold going into this game? Oh man, after uh, after what I saw week one against the Bills, and especially last week, I I don't know how he's going to perform. Obviously, the Broncos defense is not as good as the Bills defense, but I'm mm-hmm. not sure how good it is in comparison to the Colts defense. So I don't know, man. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. What are your thoughts on, uh, you know, the reports that are coming out that, you know, <laughs> regardless of what happens tonight, that the Jets will keep Adam Gaze? I mean, I know you're a Bills fan, but when you look at Gaze, what yeah. do you see? I see someone who just plain and simple doesn't know the game of football. He doesn't know what he's doing out there. He looks like just completely lost. I mean, look at his eyes. How can you trust someone whose eyes are <laughs> flying around like there's no tomorrow? It's just it's it's, it's embarrassing to, uh, to the whole uh, AFE, really. I mean, you know, <laughs> and I hear you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed as well to have him as a head coach here. And one of the things that I really applaud you folks for doing over there with the Bills organization is you found a way to not only get uh, Josh Allen properly coached, but also you surrounded him with weapons too. You put guys around him that can make plays. So, and I know there's a lot of questions. I'm not the biggest Josh Allen believer, but especially coming into this, uh, you know, year, people question, hey, can this guy really make a play? You know, can he get the ball to guys? And you guys went out and got digs and was like, hey, listen, we got Beasley. You know, we got, we got you know, other guys that, as well that can catch the rock, but we were missing that, number one. You guys went out and got him that. But when you look at our wide receiver core, we're, we have a lot of issues there. We're pretty banged up. We're still worrying about our number one. When you look at our wide receiver core yourself, what are your thoughts about it? Um, I feel like you guys really lack that kind of physical guy who can go up and just catch the ball. You guys have a lot of speed. Um, Braxton Berrios has been pretty – I think he's been pretty good. Jamison Crowder is a nice kind of deep threat. Um, haven't seen much from Rashad Perriman this year, but I feel like you guys just need like a big – like. Six three six four receiver who can just go up and grab the ball, you know. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like that's just what they're kind of lacking for uh, Donald. Yeah. When you look at our defense, this matchup with the Col- uh, with the, uh, the Broncos, excuse me. Do you think they're just going to try to run the ball down our throats? I mean, is that something that you could see them trying to just line up with Melvin Gordon and just take us out that way? Um. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, I feel like they're going to come out come out of the gates just trying that. If it's not working, then they'll resort to the pass. But 
Uh, I think they're going to stay away from the pass a lot with uh, the loss of Drew Locke and Corlin Sutton. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think they're going to be passing a lot, especially if the run game is uh, working. Yeah, yeah. So with that, man, what is your final prediction on, on the game? Oh, man, I oh, I would say I give Broncos 17, Jets 6. Ooh, Broncos 17, yeah. Jets 6. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. You know, and I understand you're not a fan of the Jets. We're going to get – hopefully we can get you in the green one day. But, look, there's a lot of Jets fans that have called in tonight that have said the exact same thing. So, yeah. it is what it is, man. But I want to thank you for calling in, man, and you have a good night. And I'm proud of you, too. All right. Whoo, man, we got fans of other teams even calling in saying, hey, <laughs> you guys are said and done. I want to thank him for calling in. Hey, always a great caller, man. Um, you know, he's a Bills guy. I have other fans as well from other teams that love to call in. Uh, please keep doing that. I love talking football with you folks. Um, you know, it, it's just tough. It's tough, really tough being a fan of this team. Tough uh, trying to <laughs> deal with what's going on here. I'm going to get back to the callers in a second. I'm going to go to the chat really quickly. Uh, 347, when I come back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your call. Tommy Hess in the chat said, it's so sad the owner doesn't see any flaws in Adam Gaze. Sad life of a Jets fan. Oh, my goodness. Are you telling me, Tommy? Salute to you. Welcome to the stream as well, Tommy. It's tough, man. It is really tough being a fan of this football team when you have an owner that's as idiotic as Chris Johnson. Uh, just the Johnsons in general, both of them. Woody Johnson, too. Just just stupid. I mean, it's just it's just completely ridiculous. So I'm going to get back to the calls. Three, four, seven. It's your time. Let me know your thoughts, who you are, and where you're from. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Is- Yes, I can. Three, four, seven. Let me. Uh, what's your name? Where you're from? Oh, hey, what's up? Um, hey, so um, I'm actually someone who like comments in the chat, but I decided to call uh, this one time. Okay. Um, okay. So my name is. Um, I'm actually like a Browns fan, but I'm I listen to the okay. show a lot. So I decided to like. Okay. You know, finally call in for once. Um, yeah. But I just want to like talk to you about like the Jets and whatnot. What I think about like Sam Donald and his situation, and I think he's being treated like really unfairly in this entire uh, situation. And I just wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah, for sure. Again, I want to thank you for calling. We take, listen, we take callers from all, no matter where you're from, uh, you know, who, who you rep, what team ever you want to call in and talk about the deaths. I am here for you. And again, I want to thank you for checking out my content, for chatting, for calling in. You know what I'm saying? I love talking to people. So let's talk about it. What what are your thoughts about Darnold and how you feel about him being uh, unfairly treated? Sure. Um, I mean, I first off, I want to say that I'm, I totally understand when people say that, you know, when people come from the mindset of tanking for Trevor, I understand it for the point of you want to reset that rookie quarterback to contract. I, I understand that. And from that mm-hmm. perspective, I totally understand it. But when it comes to just a bad one, Sam Darnold and the talent he is, a lot of people, you know, I hear say, oh, well, Sam's missing this throw. Well, Sam's not doing what he needs to do under the um, – under what a quarterback can control. And I wanted to say that, you know, a quarterback can only control so much. He can only do what he's doing based on the scheme that he's being given. Like the interception that he had against the Colts uh, last week, where he threw in the end zone, threw the corner route. It was a horrendous throw. It was a, you know, there's no denying that. But in regards to, I mean, we already know Adam Gates said that he can't audible, right? Like, that's established. Yeah. So, yeah. what's to say that Adam Gay said, hey, you know, you have this play, it's a red zone play, you see this coverage, throw the ball, don't do anything else, just throw the ball. Sam saw the coverage, mm-hmm. turned out to be not what Adam Gay told him to do, or, or what or it was not what Adam Gay saw, and Sam, mm-hmm. you know, got baited in something based on what the defense was doing. I mean, we know Sam doesn't have a lot of freedom. So, mm-hmm. it's, I mean... I dealt with, with the Browns last year and dealing with Baker and Freddie Kitchens. and Oh, Freddie Kitchens, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Coaching rules off. And yeah. a quarterback can only do what he's being coached to do. And I'm not trying to make excuses for Sam, but just we saw mm-hmm. – and my thought two quarterbacks in uh, the draft that came out a few years ago were Sam and Baker. Like, those were the two guys. Like, I love Sam. I really did. And yeah. when he's having trouble completing, like, 
simple passes and things like that. Um, there's more going on there than just, oh, well, Sam's missing an open guy. I mean, there's more to it than that. Yeah, you know, it, it is. I, I, and I look at this situation, I feel like he's being untreat, a fair, unfairly treated by the fans as well. Uh, well, by some fans. Uh, because I, I think they're asking him to do things. They're asking him to be successful in a scheme that nobody's been successful in. <laughs> Absolutely, <yeah. laughs> like does any does anybody like not notice? And I keep saying that, and people, oh, you just you just love Sam. Look, I, I do. I think he's a great player, but I'm objective as well. You know, I, I love Marcus May too, but when Marcus May stinks, I tell you, he stinks. <laughs> like I will tell you, I'm watching this kid that I remember going out there in a Jeremy Bates offense look com- look good. Like, he looked good. And Jeremy Bates was not a competent offensive coordinator. That's no, why we got rid of him I, in Todd Bowles. But I actually had a ton of conversations this, with What's going brother. on here is, like, completely ridiculous. Go ahead. If I could, if I could say one thing, I actually had, like, a ton of yeah. conversations with my brother. I hated Jeremy Bates' uh, offense for Sam because it was very, like, get the ball out quick, complete an out route, complete a slant yeah. route, complete a hitch route. And Sam is good when, like, he can break out of the pocket and make – make things happen. That's what Sam's game is. Exactly. I don't really like exactly. – I don't think Sam is best just being, like, you know, completely five-yard A statue in the pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sam yeah. has, like, and, a and, but that's of, the like, thing. Tony Romo to his game. Yeah, and, but that's the thing. It's like I, – and, and I always tell people, listen, you got quarterbacks out there like Lamar Jackson. You know, you look at what the Ravens have done with him – this is a guy that's deadly with his feet. He's, he's, he's grown into being a better pocket passer. But if they would have just put him in a system where it was just, hey, just drop back, don't run, just be a statue back there, would he be as effective as he is right now in the scheme? No, he wouldn't be as effective. He wouldn't be as dangerous. You need to utilize what Sam Darnold's skill set is. Do what makes him dangerous. You know, and I mean, he's not just all runner. This guy can throw from a pocket, but have him move out. Pick up the tempo. Play fast. But when you have I a guy that engaged that doesn't from... understand how to make adjustments to a scheme, doesn't understand how to make adjustments during during a game, I mean, what do you expect, you know? I still remember that Texans game from his rookie year where, like, the first half was yeah. okay. Sam started breaking the pocket, started finding Chris Herndon down the field. And it was just like, see, yeah. this is exactly what he's good at. And yeah. if, if I could just take it back for a moment, the 49ers game, um, you know, I had oh. – I had time to just watch it because the Browns weren't playing that that uh, that Sunday, yeah. and just watching that game actually just got me angry. I was watching it just <laughs> every third down screenplay, every third down was just a very yeah. short pass, and I felt like yeah. I was just watching nothing for three hours, yeah. nothing, and it was yeah. I don't yeah, it's, it was bad. It, it's it was frustrating. Really bad. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I gotta I gotta get going because we're I gotta close the show, man. And again, I want to thank you for calling in. But what is your final prediction for the uh, for the game against the Broncos? Ah, uh, that's tough because I really want Adam Gates to get fired, but it I, I don't know if they just can lose. I'm gonna say it's gonna be give me like a 14-12 game, Jets. Mm. Fourteen twelve. I don't, 12 I don't jets. know if that's gonna be enough to get Adam Gates fired, but I hope so. So fourteen twelve Jets. That's what you pick. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? Just a little positivity. You know what I'm saying? And look, I, I'll take it. I'll take it anywhere I can get it. You know, <laughs> even if it's fourteen twelve. So, man, listen. I want to thank you for calling in. You're one heck of a of a knowledgeable football fan, man. And I'll, I'll, you have a good night. All right. Thank you. You too, man. All have right, you have one. a good one. All right, peace. Man, great callers we had tonight. Great callers. That last caller, phenomenal. I know he's Browns fan, but this guy knew his stuff about the Jets, right? He knew his stuff, and he had a lot to say. Absolutely spoke the truth. And I agree with him on many points. I do feel like Sam is unfairly treated, and he's blamed for a lot of things that is not his fault, especially at the fact that, hey, the protection's been spotty. There have been issues. Uh, if, you, if you're talking about, you know, <laughs> there have been issues with the playmaking. It's just been completely ridiculous. But now I've got to wrap up the show again. I want to thank everyone for calling in. I apologize to anyone that, that dropped off. I have a lot of callers. Please call in the next show. I'm definitely going to, you know, cover what happens, uh, you know, in this, in this game against the Broncos on the next one. So we'll have that coming up. Now listen, 
I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go to Facebook, type in Long Beach Joe. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on the Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. That's three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Darnold jersey on, okay? I'll have it on, all right? You can also follow the show page as well at the Long Beach Joe. You can go back and forth with me on there as well. I'm also on YouTube, too, at Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets. Uh, that's where all my you know content is for my Jets, my live streams as well. So go ahead and go over there. Uh, you know, follow that page, subscribe to the page. You want to troll me in the comments, no problem. I'll troll you right back. Love going back and forth with folks as well. And as always, people, when you see me in person, it's arms out, chest open, and the free hugs are for everybody, okay? It's free hugs. I'm giving out free hugs. They'll cost you absolutely nothing. I love having discussion with you folks. Thank you folks for calling in. And again, everyone listening, the Susie G. Komen Foundation, I'm partnered with them. I started a fundraiser, all right? Anyone, you can go to all of my social medias that I just announced. All the links are going to be there. You can go in there. Please donate. I'm trying to raise 100 bucks. I donated $75 on my own money. You know, and anything you can do, a dollar, $2, anything like that, doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Anything that you can give can really help in the fight against breast cancer. And that's what I'm here to do. We're going to beat breast cancer up. We're going to knock this out. You know what I'm saying? So please give whatever you can. Again, anyone listening, the link is lacounty.info slash org slash go to slash Long Beach Joe, all right? You can also find that in my link tree as well. All across my social media, please hit me up, uh, and I will give you the link, or the link is going to be posted. It's pinned as well on my social medias, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Please donate anything you can, any anything you can. Anything you can give will help. So I want to thank you folks for listening. You folks have a good one. Peace. Yeah.